getting busy with your wife after she accidentally cursed herself and is stanking up the whole house. Wow, Autumn, that's some real love. Ah, what a peaceful morning, Shantam were engaging in lesbian relations, Rora woke up well rested, and Jasper was exploring his home as an infant who could now crawl, oh, a phone call, wow, we won a prize, what could it be? What the fuck? What in the actual fuck? They took 90,000 simoleons. Thank goodness we have for money trees. Because the extreme violence mod is looking phenomenal right now. Oasis was outside soaking up the vitamin D and talking to the plants while inside the house. Jasper Volkov had reached yet another milestone. Pull to stand. And I thought Sage was my most impressive infant. You cleared with ease. Dexter Jr. The kids would soon be going off to school. Aurora enjoying a slow morning with her favorite activity. Watching movies. Oasis was trying to learn how to play chess all on her own. And Sage, whose head was buried in yet another magic tome, had major plans for the day that had nothing to do with school. Tomorrow would be his birthday. Him aging up to a teenager. And he wanted to leave his childhood behind with a bang what do you mean you're gonna be a teen were you not just born did river not just croak soon everyone in the house was ready to start their days return of the mac hanging out with jasper autumn tending to her gardens shanna single-handedly stinking up the entire simulation with her armpits and before they knew it the kilo her kids were heading out and off to montessori school well kind of Sage was being naughty today. Since today would be his last full day as a child, he decided that he didn't want to spend a gorgeous day like this stuck inside a stuffy classroom. Bored out of his mind, he decided to ditch the textbooks and instead took the opportunity to explore his new hometown and just be a kid for the last time, he was up to mischief, using his magical powers when he shouldn't, like zapping strangers or starting fires. Damn, that blew up in your face. I swear to God, if I have to add another dust pile to the Kiloha family tree. Hold up, Miss Sawyer Oklo, you're pregnant. Did I forget about her existence? Yes, but at least she's kinda interesting now. Way to go first child of generation 3. Luckily for Sage, he had already learned the Scrubaroo spell, so he didn't stay covered in salt for long. He then went to go check out one of the community boards. Maybe we should lay off the magic for a while bestie, don't you think? Of course not, he couldn't help himself, magic was probably the one thing that made him feel alive. He was so excited to become a teen tomorrow, and really get into his magical abilities. And rummage through garbage bins. What did Autumn and Shanna create? After that mischievous morning, Sage was getting hungry, stopping by the hungry traveler in Port Promise for an early lunch, and now he has black hair. Or he's trying to be like his gay-ass uncle Ezra. Sage confidently walked up to the host and asked for the finest table in the establishment. Oh, and a coloring mat. He really needs a coloring mat. Oh my god, Alexis. I didn't know you got a job as a server. Sage was sat at a table smack dab in the middle of the restaurant, quickly skimming through the menu and deciding on a fluffy buttermilk pancake stack. Jesus Christ Sitch, what are they doing to you here? Midway through finishing his pancakes, Sage nearly shit his pants when he realized who was sitting at the table in front of him. His to gay uncles, what the hell were Ezra and Mason doing in Evergreen Harbor? Sage prayed that his uncle Ezra wouldn't notice that he was here and ditching school. His strict mother Shanna would kill him. Unfortunately for Sage, it was too late. My flaming hot disappointment came over and greeted the partial disappointment with the best hug ever. He was so happy to see his nephew. But 
Wait, shouldn't he be in school? The jig was up, Sage confessed to everything. He ditched school today to enjoy his last day as a child before his birthday tomorrow. He's only done it once and wouldn't do it again. He begged Uncle Ezra to not tell his mums. Ezra thought that was hilarious. All right, all right, he wouldn't tell Autumn or Shano about him ditching class. But just this once. He's not a regular uncle, he's a cool uncle. Sage was so thankful for his uncle. He promised that he would never catch him ditching again, and Isra playfully threatened that he better not. They gained the supportive family dynamic from the ordeal. They talked for some time before Sage, with his red hair back once again, stopped by the community center. He found it boring. He left once again for the other side of town, stumbling upon a creepy shop that looked completely different than any other building in Evergreen Harbor. What on earth was this place? Immediately upon entering, Sage was drawn in. It was magnetic, filled with various trinkets, crystals, gems, and even animals and insects. Or, it kind of resembles Joseph. This place was so neat, and he really wanted to keep exploring it. But unfortunately, school was just about to be over. He had to get back home so his mothers wouldn't suspect anything. But he would definitely be venturing back to this shop soon. Though, unfortunately for him, he wasn't as slick as he thought he was. Because right when he got back home, Shanna was outside waiting for him. She received a call from the principal this afternoon. Sage ditched school. Oh shit, he kinda forgot about that. You didn't think your absence would raise any suspicions, bro. But that wasn't what Shanna was so pissed off about. What really angered her was the fact that the principal also told her that Sage is a D student. He is going to have to make up for this in high school, skipping class while being a D student. What was wrong with him? If he was struggling so much with school, why did he not ask for hers or mama's help? Sage was not struggling with school. He yelled, he just hated it. How can she expect him to enjoy school when he's a whole spellcaster? The human world is so boring in comparison. He just wants to read his tomes and study magic. Shanna started to think that maybe this was her fault. Maybe she shouldn't have introduced magic to him so early, she was just so excited to finally get to bond over it with her son. Regardless, it wasn't an excuse to ditch or flunk classes, so she had to do the hard parental thing and ground Sage. Yes, even with his birthday being tomorrow, Sage was obviously upset. Running up to his room, and Shanna contemplated if maybe it was time to limit Sage's access to spellcasting, if that was even possible. Perhaps she should hold off on telling Aurora about it too. At the very least, she didn't have to worry about Oasis in the kitchen. Rest in piss was with her son Jasper and preparing him a cake. Because today is his birthday, him aging up to a toddler. She now understood why Autumn was always sad during her children's birthdays. She was devastated to see Jasper grow up. She really did enjoy his newborn and infant stages. Shanna, please, I am begging you to go to the magic realm to get those damn potion ingredients. Her brother Dexter Kibo had arrived to come and celebrate his son's birthday. He was drained from work, but wouldn't miss it for the world, girl. Even Oasis is tired of the stink. Her poor werewolf knows. He then went over to greet the love of his life, Royal Farm's famous chicken Volkov. Of course, he couldn't stop himself from flirting with her, now that what they want with each other was out in the open, and they were both very comfortable with it. After she was done with the cake, Red Moon in Venus woke her baby up and blew one last raspberry on his tummy before handing him over to his daddy. She wanted him to do the honors of aging their precious son up. Upon aging up, Jasper was given the inquisitive and fussy traits, and he turned out so damn cute, unfortunately. Still not a drop of rinse freeze genetics in sight, but that didn't matter to her. Radish Slices was just glad to see her son happy and healthy, she hoped it would stay that way. It's what he deserves, and what Shanna deserves is an ass whooping for staying putrid for this long. But thankfully, she was just about to do something about that tonight, after everyone was asleep. 